Hello from DeKalb, everybody. Great to have you with us. Welcome to opening night of the 2020 Virtual Victor E. Bash. I am Bill Baker, indeed, so happy to be back in DeKalb on campus at this particular building. Ten days of programming. We're going to get this underway tonight, and the, uh, the Virtual Victory Bash, no question, it is more important, it is more vital to NIU athletics than it ever has been before. And tonight, you are going to hear from a number of our fantastic student athletes, a couple of our outstanding coaches, about what your support means to them. And I think it's safe to say, as we said, your support, that's the key. That is vital at this time, especially more than ever. Tonight, we're also going to talk a little bit more about all of our featured nights, which will be taking place over the span of these next 10 days. And there are many of them. You'll know exactly how it is that you can get involved. And trust me, you'll find, you'll learn a little bit about people involved at NIU Athletics over the span of these next 10 days, something that I'm pretty sure you've never known before. Most of the content that we have over these next 10 days will indeed premiere. It can be seen live right here on the NIU Athletics YouTube channel. All of this content, well, it's absolutely free to watch at any particular time. So we're asking you to invite your friends, your coworkers, your neighbors, anybody on their social platforms. Let's make this a 10-day celebration of Northern Illinois Athletics, shall we? The first way you can get involved in addition to watching tonight and interacting with us of course, it's through the Victor E. Bash auction. Now, the bidding is open right now at this particular time. You need to go to victorebash.givesmart.com, and we'll get into those details in just a, a couple of minutes. When I say we, well, it's time to bring in our co-host this evening. You know him. He has been doing an absolutely amazing job over the past eight years, coming into his eighth year, actually, leading Northern Illinois University Athletics. He is Associate Vice President and Director of Athletics, Sean T. Frazier. And we are, Mr. Frazier, appropriately distanced. We've measured it out yes, we have. in our studio in the, uh, the Convocation Center. I know it was important for you to be here tonight, without question. And uh, it's great to see you. Missed seeing you. It's, it's been three months, but... We're back, and, and hopefully all is well with you. No question at all. Thanks a lot, Bill, and I appreciate you doing this. This is a big night for us, and uh, you're right. Uh, we have missed one another. We have missed our fan base, our, our student athletes, our coaches. Quite frankly, we've missed everyone because we've been kind of on lockdown. And a uh, uh, big night for us, and I really appreciate you uh, following through and leading us during this very important time. It's a pleasure. It's always great to be on campus. No question about that. We're going to begin with, uh, with a couple of questions and uh, a brief update from you if we could do that. So fans, we welcome you to send us any questions you might have at this particular time through the YouTube chat stream. You'll find it right there on the, the screen. The first thing we want to know is we have student athletes reporting back to campus. Now, you, you mentioned that. You announced that last week. So the testing process that is involved with them coming back on campus, how's that going? And pretty much on track, do you think, for the voluntary workouts to begin next Monday as scheduled? Yeah, you know, it's interesting. COVID-19 has put a lot of challenges, a lot of adversity. Um, I think that uh, our plan, we have several committees that are working on this. We've got a back to competition committee uh, for our department. We have a back to competition or back to face to face instruction for the campus and then the MAC. Our conference has a committee very similar to that. But to answer your questions point blank is that we're going through that first strike of testing, physical, social distancing, uh, sanitizing our, our, our different uh, areas where our student athletes will be working out. And it's a process, right? Uh, working with the Cal uh, Health Department, working with all of our state uh, uh, legis legislators, our governor, all that back to competition and all the things that necessary that we have to check off to maintain mm -hmm. health and safety. So things are going right. Uh, we're, we're excited. We're chomping at the You've bit gotta be now. to get, yes. it, to, to get you, know, you know, really to get it going. And uh, we feel really good about the student athletes that we have coming back, uh, primarily right now football and men's, women's basketball. And then we will start that transition uh, back to service. You know, I think that's exactly what, uh, what Husky Nation the fans, everybody surrounding uh, Northern Illinois has a love of this department and of this program. It's exactly what you needed to hear at, at this particular point in time. That's that's great news. And I know the coaches and student athletes indeed are going to be ready to go over this one. Next up, what about the fans? Uh, uh, do you think that we'll be able to have fans in the uh, in the stands at, uh, at Husky Stadium this year in time for the Rhode Island game or somewhere down the line? And do we have any idea what that might look like? Yeah, well, you know, I don't have a crystal ball yet, but I will tell you that I'm very optimistic, right? The glass is always half full. Um, I feel that if we can do and get through some of these cycles of what we're seeing with the virus right now and understanding 
how that process is going through and observing those particular health and safety uh, concerns, uh, we will be able to at least social distance in a way where we'll have some type of fans. Um, I can't promise anything at this point, but I'm going to work very hard to make sure that Husky Nation has a chance to see uh, our, our teams, you know, their student athletes. So uh, that process is ongoing. It's too, too early to make that determination mm -hmm. where we sit right now in, in June, but the signs look good. You know, the signs look really good mm -hmm. that we're doing the things necessary, but we have to do the number one thing right now is to observe health and safety and to social distance. And that could mean that we're going to have limited uh, uh, capacity to be able to have folks to be in their normal seats in the normal way that they would view uh, uh, the games coming up. But I'm optimistic. Hold your breath. You never know. But we will definitely try hard to make that happen. Indeed, let's uh, let's take our first question from uh, the chat line, and specifically, they'd like to know about football. I mean, from top to bottom, you know, the uh, the progress we've made, the the process, what it's going to look like for football from here towards uh, the beginning of the season. Yeah, I think that that's a really large question. I, I appreciate that <laughs> folks asking that question. Uh, might be taking the rest of the evening to try to answer it, but it starts with the health and safety concerns. You know, the COVID nineteen situation. You know, so, so what we're doing now is we're going through the, the, you know, the testing, uh, we're going through the physical, we're going through the back to competition protocols, and they're pretty lengthy. I, I put out Frazier's Corner and I kind of really talked about all the different aspects of that, but what I can tell you is that as long as the virus is contained, and as long as that we don't have people testing positive and other types of things, which then sets us back to quarantine and all the things necessary to keep the safety component, we will have a ramp up situation where we'll know exactly where we are. So I think the football wise, you know, obviously football's chomping at the bit. Coach Hammock, you know, obviously the, the boys are, are chomping at the bit. So are all of our fall student athletes. You know, they want to get back. They want to make sure that they continue on their plight of, of excellence and, and compete. But we definitely have to make sure we, we take care of the health and safety. So we're too early right now to make a definitive answer about this is what's happening for Rhode Island. This is what's happening for Iowa. This is what's happening for, mm -hmm. for the rest of the season. But we are tracking. It's a good sign to be able to have athletes back on campus in different spaces. Because um, if you would have asked me this about a month ago, I, I would have said, I do not think that's going to happen. Now it's happening, and now what we have to do is maintain the course. So that's where we are right now. So the progress has been made. Absolutely. Progress has no been made. That's the good thing. And this sort of leads into the very next question we have uh, off of our chat line. And, and that is, is the entire football schedule at, at this point in time, is that still in play? Oh, that's intact. You know, that's intact. We work really hard. Uh, on, on putting together a very competitive schedule and we have not made or have made any adjustments to that at this point in time. Now there's all kinds of scenarios that we're taking a look at based on what's happening with the virus but as far as where we are, as far as who we're playing, and as far as what's going on, uh, it's still going on. So there's no, there's no deviation from that at this state. Uh, we feel comfortable about where we are. Uh, we're, we're preparing like we are playing uh, our first game against Rhode Island and uh, we're getting up for it. And uh, that's why the anticipation, you know, we passed the 100 day mark to a college football start. People are being more anxious about that, but they're also being ca cautious too. Cautiously optimistic about what we're going to see. So no, no adjustments. We've made some adjustments with season mm -hmm. ticket uh, member plans and other types of things to accommodate our fan base. But at the end of the day, it's about making sure that we keep people healthy and safe while we go through this transitionary period. Well, you know, and obviously football, that's that's the largest uh, piece that you've got to deal with in terms of your program here at, at NIU. But the rest of the sports, when you look at women's and men's basketball, you look at some of the fall sports that will be coming up in soccer at, uh, you know, on, on both sides of the coin. Where are they at this point in time and how, how do they fit into the uh, the, uh, the process? Well, again, you know, we're still going through the process of our fall teams first, right? So. Um, you know, we've got some workouts and some volunteer type things that are happening over the summertime. But the reality is that we're gearing up for, you know, obviously for the soccers, you know, we're, we're, we're all of our fall sports, our volleyball. So we, we, we're looking at that as a unit that's coming back first, obviously. And then we're taking a look at as we fold into our winter sports and, and spring sports and et cetera from there. But I think the real, the biggest issue at this point is to make sure that we are tracking where our campus. Our, our, at the campus goes when we have face-to-face -face instruction and, and, and as we are taking a look at how we're going to deal with the general student population overall, this is going to really determine if we're going to have competition. Uh, we're, if we're not going to have face-to-face uh, -face competition, we're obviously certainly not going to have uh, mm -hmm. co uh, competition uh, 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 happen. 
learning. So face-to-face -face instruction first, and then we can take a look at what is going on relative to our athletic programs, because obviously our students, our student athletes are students first, and that will dictate how we progress. Okay, I'm guessing that you have got us as up to date as you can possibly take us at, at this particular point in time. That's great news. Fans are interested. I know they want to know, hence the, uh, the questions. How about we check back with you in just a little while? We've got a lot to, uh, to take care of on our plate. Uh, time to get started really with the reason that we are here tonight, and that is to hear from of our fantastic athletes and, and coaches, uh, the people who uh, directly benefit from the monies that uh, we collect via the Victory Bash. Leading off, we are going to hear from a very impressive young lady. She's from Women's Track and Field. Please welcome Rebbe Amartafio Amr as we'll listen in. Hello everyone. My name is Remy Amartafio and I recently graduated this past May with a bachelor's degree in bio biological sciences and a DOMO minor in psychology and chemistry. I was also a member and captain of the track and field team and was on the executive board of the Student Athlete Advisory Committee here at NIU. I was born in Chicago, Illinois and shortly after moved to Accra, Ghana. There I was raised by my grandparents and supported by a community that exemplified selflessness and the importance of giving. They taught me the value of service and truly modeled the life of Jesus, the Son of God, and his desires to put others' needs above himself, which is something I strive to do. After returning to the U.S., I quickly took up track and field at Evanston Township High School and began to perfect my main event, the hurdles. I was recruited to come to NIU and was excited to begin my next journey to run for Coach T. Berry. My time at NIU has been better than I could have ever imagined. It was filled with so many laughs, tears, and sweat on and off the track, and the experiences I gained con continues to shape me into the person that I am today. As a student athlete, I fought hard by the grace of God and found success. I found success in my academics, sport, as well as in the community. Giving back to others is something that always brings me so much joy, and this was something I took great pride in as a student athlete here at NIU. While at NIU, I regularly volunteered at Northwestern Medicine Kishwaukee Hospital, working at the visitor's front desk and assisting with direct admits, as well as the Husky Food Pantry sorting out foods that were donated and assisted with distributing the items to the public. I also mentored two young girls at Clinton Rosette Middle School here in DeKalb. Over my four years here, I volunteered over 400 hours, which earned me the 2019 and 2020 Community Service NIU Athletic Community Service Award. Serving the NIU community has not only been life-changing, but has shown me how influential student athletes can be and the positive impacts we can have on those we serve. Something as simple as showing a child you care by showing up for them brings unimaginable joy to them, which I learned mentoring at Clinton Rosette. I undoubtedly believe that the opportunities and experiences I was given as a student athlete at NIU are ones that continue to shape me to keep serving those in the community as a future physician. Being a student athlete at NIU is a privilege and something I take great pride in. The student athlete experience would not be possible without the generous financial support of our donors. None of us would be here today without your continued support. I felt that the best way I could honor your dedication to Husky Athletics and your investment in me and the student athlete experience was to pay it forward and give back to the community by volunteering. Thank you for making a difference in my life and allowing students like myself to better those the lives of those in the community. I want to thank my fellow student athletes, the staff who worked so hard to give us the opportunities and experiences, and to Coach T. Berry who took a chance on me. Thank you for making the most of my experience at NIU. Go Huskies. Wow, that, uh, Sean, that, that, that's, I mean, thank you to Remy, first of all, for that message. But she is definitely an outstanding, a great example of uh, what it means to be a Husky student athlete, isn't she? There's no question about it. She's, uh, she's very outspoken, but you know what? I love the fact about Remy, you know, she's also on my captain's, kind of athletic director's captain's council, mm -hmm. and she is a true leader. She leads by example on and off the track, and she does a great job in articulating the message. So that's what the Husky spirit is about. That's what the NIU student is all about. So, well, I'm so proud of her. No question about that. And you speak of a true leader. Well, <laughs> there's another one. We could go right from Remy into a gentleman by the name of Jordan Lynch. And here's a guy that you're going to want to tune in on Friday night because this, this is a special piece. So many people say, well, you had Jordan Lynch in your program, and, and he was a Heisman Trophy candidate. No. 
He was a Heisman Trophy finalist. Let's not forget that. And what a special night in New York City when they bring the finalists together. This Friday night, you're, you're going to have a chance to connect with the people that were there. You were there. Donna Turner, of course, was there. It's not, it's not just revisiting this thing, but you're going to get a real behind the scenes look as to what went on that weekend. It was electric. It was electric. Um, to say this, you know, if you're a college football purist and to be in the, the confines of what the downtown athletic club in New York is all about and to see all those past champions and to have Jordan sit there and be right there and be received and respected. It was a time I tell you, it gave you chills. You know, and to see this young man with his family and the things that he accomplished and what this university accomplished, um, you got to be prideful about that. that. That does not happen every place, and it happened right here at NIU. Yes, indeed. In 2013, hard to believe it was that long ago, was it? Time just marches on it. But it's amazing. So no doubt about this. Uh, the reminder, this is going to be a live interactive event once again. And just like tonight, you'll be able to tune in on the NIU YouTube channel, and you'll have the chat box. You'll be able to ask a question live, and we'll be able to pass it on to you. We'll be able to pass it on to Donna, and certainly we're going to be able to pass the questions on to, uh, to Jordan Lynch. So mark your calendars. That is going to be this coming Friday. We have a message now from one of our outstanding standing coaches as we continue with our 2020 Victor E. Bash, our virtual Victor E. Bash. It is opening night. This gentleman will describe the impact that you as a Husky donor will have and have had on his program. Hi, I'm Ryan Swan, your head men's soccer coach here at NIU. I'm now entering my fourth year with the Huskies program and truly believed we're poised to have even greater success than we've had in the previous few years. I could see the desire and the demand for success when I first got on campus. It came from our leadership, from our administration, from our student athletes and from my coaching peers. And now I can see that it also goes beyond the walls of NIU. It goes out to our boosters and our supporters who are all around the country and all around the world. Many of them reached out to me to celebrate and join in the joys when we achieve some of our goals. Just in the last couple of years, these have been things like beating Akron University for the first time since 2006, winning and retaining the Wuhan Trophy, having our first player in Kevin Rodriguez drafted by Major League Soccer. We've now got people achieving to the extraordinary levels of All-American, all Academic All-American. Jan Mertens picked up Academic All-American, picked up the MAC Medal of Excellence just in this past year. Jan was also part of the program when we sent some men's and women's soccer players over to Rwanda to help with uh, humanity for children. And they were in an education process where we used the game of soccer to help educate in HIV prevention to look at school retention, to look at anti-gender violence. And so we're looking at the holistic approach to our student athletes and what they can do, not just here on the field, but out in the greater world as well. Of course, men's soccer is not the only program that's striving for this excellence. And you can look at any program, any coach, any student athlete, and you can see that same desire. And one of the reasons we believe that every sport can reach their goals is because of the facilities and because of the support that we receive from our boosters. We look here at the Chessick Practice Facility, which is the envy of programs throughout the nation. We just added our new nutrition centre in the past year, which allows us a game-changing proposition to fuel and to prepare our players in a way that we haven't been able to do so before. If you look at the Convocation Centre and some of the events that we've hosted in the last couple of years, the MAC Wrestling Championship, the MAC gymnastics championships and really when our fans show up to these things and show that they're second to none it really lifts everyone in the department it lifts all of our student athletes and it also makes my job easier as a recruiter people want to be part of success and that's what we managed to provide especially because of the things that our boosters have helped to provide us here now obviously these are unprecedented and challenging times but there's certain things that you can rely upon that we know that will remain unchanged our students athletes desire and commitment to get better every day is still there from the moment the campus had to close down due to the, the pandemic, our student athletes have been working towards getting back on campus and working to get better. You look at the magical moments that we've enjoyed on the athletic fields. I think back to Enrique Benuelos' physics-defying shot that he scored to retain the Wuhan Trophy this year. Those moments are going to return this year and in future years. Some of the faces will be familiar, some will be new because all of our coaching staff are out there bringing in new and quality Huskies to bring into our programs. And I can't wait for you guys to see them. The current climate is just another challenge for us. Maybe different in some of the other ones, but challenges are what we live for as sports fans, coaches, and athletes. Remember when your Huskies were down 19 points in the MAC football championship in the third quarter? The easy time to quit. 
but did they? No, they stepped up and we found a way to win. And that's what we're looking now. How do we find our way past this latest challenge? We can look to our leadership and your athletic director, Sean Frazier, your president, Lisa Freeman. They've already set out a pathway to recovery. We're looking at some hard decisions that are out there. We've got to be fiscally responsible and they've shown that and we're all going to share in that responsibility. They're also looking at the most safe way for everyone to return to campus. We want our students back. We want our student athletes back. We want our fans back. We want to get campus back to where it was last fall, last spring before things were shut down and we can't wait to get you back in the stands. So now the question is, what can you do to help us? What is it you can be in this moment in time? Well, what I need to ask for is a donation here that can help our student athletes and our staff get to the level that you want to see us at. And I can promise you that your donations are going to come in and they're directly going to benefit your student athletes. So when we talk about that excellence on the field, that excellence in the classroom, that excellence in the community, that's what you're going to be contributing to. So when these trophies continue to come rolling in this fall, this spring, you can say more than ever that you were part of that success. And thank you now for your continued and unwavering support. Go Huskies. <clears throat> well, indeed, another another quality Husky, and this time uh, in the person of Coach Swan. And his program is on the rise. There's no question. Looking forward to the fall, getting him on the field, building on the uh, successes that he had back in the the 2019 season. Sean, no question about it. Ryan, Ryan has done he's done a fantastic job. Uh, you could tell the level of talent, uh, the confidence level uh, on and off the pitch. He does it the right way. He's very passionate. <laughs> He's very articulate. And at the end of the day, we, we are going to move that program to the next level. Every year, He's, you've seen a progression of excellence. So I'm excited about them. No question. No question at all. You're you're watching the the virtual Victory Bash. This is the kickoff for 2020 and the Victory Bash auction line. It, it's up and it's running. It runs 24 hours a day, seven days a week, all the way through until the 19th of the month when we conclude everything. The auction line open for your bids. Please take advantage. And I understand, too, that besides what we have up there now, little different things are going to be added from uh, from time to time, from day to day. It, it, what you see right now is not necessarily indicative of what's going to be there on Thursday. Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and so on. Yeah, and I'm and I'm uh, I'm bidding right as you speak right now because <laughs> I'm being outbidded right now. And whoever you are, I'll get you. I'm going to make it happen. No, you're not. You're not going to so. get me. <laughs> <laughs> Well, let's take a look at next Monday night. We're going through the various activities, the various features we have as part of the, the virtual victory bash. June 15th, Monday night, 7 o'clock. Now, this is something that, that I'm looking forward to. Um, the NIU in the pros panel discussion. We're going to take a look at some Huskies. Uh, Max Sharping, for example, is going to be back in, as part of this. Larry English, Chad Beebe, you cannot leave out. Michael Turner, and they're going to talk NIU football. They're, they're going to talk a little bit about even the National Football League, even, even maybe a little bit of football as far as the Canadian Football League is concerned, from what I understand. Maybe we'll find out what's with that 55-yard line that they have up there. I've never, never been able to understand it. I think we're going to get some great stories out of this group, Sean. Yeah, you know, it's, it, it, it's interesting to kind of watch our, our alumni, right, uh, and folks who have made it to the pros from our program. It, it, it's not a shock anymore. You know, we have a collection of young men that have done it the right way. You know, we, we have our mantra called the hard way. Uh, it's clear that, you know, we put a quality product on, on, on the turf, you know, in the pros. And, and to have those stories, they're pretty electric because they're going to talk a little bit about their struggles coming in, their adversity, but where they are now, what, what they, where, where they have ended up. And to have this level of tradition, um, it, it's phenomenal. And to have, obviously, Coach Hammock to kind of share his stories, uh, at, with his pro background too, with the Baltimore Ravens, you can you, you're seeing now that that program that everyone says, okay, uh, the, uh, he's he's from NIU. Oh yeah, Th that's mm -hmm. not a shock anymore. The pros know the scouts who come through our facilities, and quite frankly, all of our, our all of our alumni have done quite well uh, at the pro level. You know, one thing, I, in fact, I may have to try to dial in and, and get the question asked, but you know, here's Max Sharping, you know, terrific offensive lineman over the past couple of years, and he was drafted by, uh, by Houston, 
and he's from Green Bay, and I've always kidded him over the last two or three years. He's got a Chicago Bears pennant hanging, you know, in his locker somewhere in the back. He was kind of a quasi Bears fan, despite being from Green. He's denied it, by the way, yeah, vehemently. He's, he's going to deny that. One. You know, but here's, <laughs> here's the thing: you know, when he was drafted by Houston, their very first preseason game was at Lambeau Field yeah. against the Green Bay Packers. Yeah. That yeah. had to be a thrill for him, and, and I'm sure that'll be part of it. That'll be Monday night, 15th of June. You want to be here, and uh, you want to take part of that as well. We'll have the interactive chat going on. You'll be able to talk with these guys and ask some of your questions so uh, and with Thomas Hammock as uh, the moderator look out anything would anything could possibly happen I do remember talking with Tommy Lee Lewis on a very similar program he's with the New Orleans Saints at the mm -hmm. time but he talked about that miracle up in Minnesota where the the Vikings won it with 30 seconds to go on that that goofy pass with the defensive back fell down and his comment was all the trash talking that was going on mm -hmm. from the New Orleans bench into the Miami mm -hmm. uh, sideline and <laughs> the, the Minnesota sideline and, and how things just turned in you know, the span of seven seconds so you hear some really good stories yeah. that you might never know about june 15th monday night don't forget that as uh, the uh, the husk x's and o's if you would huskies of the pros we'll talk about it with the uh, thomas hammock uh, doing uh, the monitoring on that particular thing well here's a gentleman that we're going to hear from and there's no question he has niu football in his blood his dad played here uh, back in the the middle 80s 85 then back again in in i think 87 through through 1989 he is another outstanding student athlete uh, from husky football please welcome cole tucker Hello, my name is Cole Tucker. I'm a junior here on the football team at NIU. I'm also a marketing major and we started the Accelerated Digital Marketing Master's Program in the fall. I grew up right here in DeKalb, Illinois and lived about 10 minutes away from Husky Stadium. So naturally, I was raised to be a Husky fan. Growing up, we had season tickets to all the football games and ever since I was six years old, all I ever wanted to do was be play college football. My parents both pushed me to be hardworking and motivated, something they both learned here as student athletes at NIU. My father, Brett, was a All-American defensive back on the football team back in the late 80s and in the 1990 draft was selected in the eighth round. My mother, Cindy, was on the gymnastics team from 1989 to 1992 and was part of the 1991 team that was elected into the Husky Hall of Fame back in 2003. When I was offered a scholarship here in 2016, it was a dream come true. Other schools had offered and recruited me to come to their school, but my heart was always in the Cal. I saw what NIU meant to my family and how the support from donors impacted the student athlete experience for my parents. Coming, committing to NIU was one of the best students of my life. When I arrived here my freshman year, I felt that not only was I playing for my, both my teammates and coaches, but also those who had ever coached and played before me. The Husky family is very close and unique, and for me, that extends beyond blood. When I was growing up, I was able to see some of the greats play at Husky Stadium, such as Ryan Diem, Michael Turner, Garrett Wolf. Jordan Lynch and Chandler Harnish. Uh, every time I put on the jersey, I feel like I'm, I'm in debt to them to do the best I can because I feel motivated to perform for them. I have to live up to the standard that they set of consistently making the MAC championship game and going to bowl games. I was lucky enough to play for a MAC championship game and win it back in 2018 and also go to a bowl game that year. And that year was one of the best experiences I've ever had playing football. Being a Husky does not mean just excelling on the field, but also in the classroom. Northern Illinois has given me the opportunity to get a great education. We also have a family legacy of greatness in the classroom. And my, dreams were, my dream was always to become a business major, and seeing that NIU has one of the top business programs in the country, it was a perfect fit. My experience these past couple years with the professors has allowed me to work hard and be motivated enough to get my master's degree early and enroll this fall. NIU has also given me the opportunity to give back to the community that I love. One of the things that I love most about the student athlete experience here is that the, student, or that the program uh, prides itself on being very well in the community, working well hard in the community. I've had the opportunity to work food drives and interact with kids in elementary schools. When I was growing up, I remember that some of the best days of school were when the NAU football players would come and read to us and just do, have class with us, joke around with us. Now that I'm that person, I love being able to make an impact on kids and become a role model. I love being able to become a role model and it means the world to give back. Being a Husky means that you're part of a unique family. There is a legacy that has been set in front of you and it is up to us, the past, present, and future to make sure the student athletes have the best experience while they're here, in the classroom and in the community. I want to thank those who came before me, who have paved the way, and those who have supported the experience that I've been able to have at Northern Illinois. Without you, the Husky experience would not be what it is today. Thank you to our amazing donors who have made it possible for me to give back 
and circle the Husky pride in the local community. Boy, whatever, uh, whatever I see Cole Tucker bump into him around uh, the stadium in, in the, uh, the Gown Vacation Center, it reminds me that I've been around long enough to remember and actually call the games his dad played in back in, you know, the middle 1980s. What's interesting, though, his dad was, was a defensive back yeah. with football, you know, married a gymnast and who's in the Hall of Fame. Yeah. So, I mean, this is a real northern Illinois family here. But Cole decided to go to the offensive side of the game. He's, he's a wide receiver here. Wow, we've talked, uh, we've talked, wait a minute, you really want that football on helmet, don't you? <laughs> All right, well, take That's that. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Talking about the auction, which is online now. It's online 24 hours a day, seven days a week, right on through the 19th of June. Uh, so many different items. We're going to be adding items, as we have said, uh, from day to day. Check it out daily, every day, a couple of times a day. See what's going on with the uh, the virtual Victory eBash auction. We talked about Friday with Jordan Lynch this coming Friday. We mentioned, uh, of course, uh, Monday with Huskies in the pros. Next up, the wine and spirits poll. That is one week from tonight, Sean. And this is a, a new one for me. I, I'd not heard of this beforehand, but from what I understand, $35 gets you a ticket. You purchase this particular ticket. In doing so, you're purchasing a number. Mm -hmm. You choose the number that you want. You do that on the auction site, by the way, and this will take place beginning next Wednesday. It's not up there right now, but the uh, the wine spirits and pulled next Wednesday on the auction site. Uh, the number that you choose will correspond to one of the bottles of spirits being donated by, uh, well, for example, Blanton's Whiskey Acres, mm -hmm. you know, relatively new business here in DeKalb County, right. but an outstanding business. And then what, what can we say about Aqua Viva? I no mean, they've been partners. It's, uh, when, when it comes to wine, they are tough to beat. You can pick any number. You can buy more than one number if you like to. Uh, um, I'd like any chance that you've got any scotch involved in this thing here because uh, I just might have to get online. Well, there's some uh, there's a couple of things on the on the auction uh, Blantons, I believe. I believe that we have people out there who are looking at that closely. <laughs> hint, hint. Uh, and then there's some others. Obviously, you know, we talked about uh, Aquaviva and Vito's been so generous and Whiskey Acres. The, the real issue here is that we, we're, we're, there's a local flavor here. Mm -hmm. We want mm -hmm. to support local. Uh, we talked about Cole Tucker. Uh, local family uh, that's here, generational uh, Husky that's supporting. There's a real theme about the family atmosphere of NIU. So all these different things go to support NIU, community. This is the theme that runs through our Husky Nation. So very important to, to keep Keep the theme on that, a common denominator on that, and I appreciate the support. It means a lot to everyone. Yeah, we'd love to sell out all of the uh, the possible numbers as well, so please keep that in, in your mind. And, and uh, the virtual wine and spirits pool, newest, uh, the newest uh, uh, member of the uh, the growing list of uh, of, of programs that, that will join uh, the Victory Bash and for 2020, what is going to be our virtual Victory Bash. There's the information you're looking at it right now. Be sure to purchase your tickets. Now, let's begin uh, with, uh, let's move along, shall we say, with a uh, message to our NIU donors from our women's head soccer coach, Julie Koloff. Hi, I'm Julie Kohlhoff, head women's soccer coach here at NIU. I became a coach because I wanted to be able to give back through a game that has really given me a lot. A part of doing that is being committed to the holistic development of my student athletes. I feel really fortunate and proud to be a Husky because I get to work every day in a department that's also committed to that. One great addition to our department has been the Northwestern Medicine Performance Center. Uh, that's a place where our student athletes can stop in between practice and class and grab the nutrition that they need and also receive counseling on what they should be doing to fuel their bodies appropriately. That means bringing in mental health care professionals to talk with our team about the stresses of being a student athlete and how to appropriately work through them. It means traveling with professionalism and representing our university well when around the road. It also looks like difficult conversations and making sure that we're challenging ourselves uh, to be the best version of ourselves so that we can contribute that not only to our team and our university but to our communities and the world. One of the things that we do as a program is Heart of a Husky, something that I, I really really enjoy a lot and so do our players. We do it every spring. Basically what it is is every Wednesday we go out to dinner as a team and on those days two players present. Each player speaks about what's important to them. This year's topic being three to five lessons that you've learned in your life that you feel like have been most impactful. Uh, so they share with us those lessons and then also the people that help them learn those lessons. 
for us it's an opportunity not only to just break bread and kind of relax a little bit away from you know the stresses of academics and athletics but also to come together as a team to learn more about each other and also work on our public speaking. I have to say that all of these initiatives would not be possible without the generosity of our donors and also the fact that your generosity goes far beyond just the four years of the time that our student athletes are on campus. Uh, we do something on Thursdays called Triumph Thursday. On those days we bring back women who used to play college soccer and they talk to our team about life after college, how they're triumphing, what they're doing in their careers and in their everyday life. And every single woman that has come back to speak to our team has mentioned the impact of their student athlete experience, whether it's in the success that they have uh, in their careers or just the joy that it has brought them in their life uh, and the connections that they still have with their teammates. So. What I want to say most is thank you. Thank you so much for your generosity. We couldn't do all of this without you. I know these are unprecedented times, so I really, really believe that the support that we give our student athletes right now, both as coaches and as donors, goes so far reaching. It will go beyond this moment and will impact them for the rest of their life, and then also the people that they get to impact for the rest of their lives. So from the bottom of my heart, thank you so, so much for your generosity. Oh, Sean, another excellent message. Uh, thanks to Julie. There's no question she hit the nail pretty much on the head. And I know you're proud of her. I know you're proud of the entire staff, the head coaches and, and uh, the assistants, uh, things they have done with their program, but especially how they've handled, how they've guided their student athletes over the span of these last 90 days. Well, you know, it's been interesting. This is really going to really dictate and really kind of uh, flesh out about who, are, who is enacting leadership. Right. Mm -hmm. So COVID-19 is one thing we're dealing with, obviously, the race relation, the social issues that are going on in America. I've watched our coaches just rise to the occasion. Julie is is right in there. She leads by example. She's very passionate on making sure that we have a unified front and really nurturing her student athletes. Right. So so it's great to be able to watch our coaches. But it doesn't surprise me because part of the interview process, part of the you know, vetting process to, is to make sure that we've, we, we have leaders that are preparing our young men and women for citizenship in today's society. And Julie exemplifies that. So it's great to see her and, 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 and using this platform, but at the end of the day, it's who we are as NIU Huskies. Yeah, how often have you had a chance to really get face to face or have you over the last three months with, uh, with the head coaches or has it always been a, yeah. a small square on a, on, a, on a computer screen? That's basically what it is. And, and you know, by obviously observing the COVID-19 and the issues around health and safety, but it's been virtual, virtual chats, pretty much what we're doing right now. But one thing we do is we have some spirit con uh, spirited conversations, um, and, and we've had a lot of, of them, especially now with these two major adversity issues around COVID-19, and then now some of the social racial issues of our time. Uh, these are watershed moments for both of these, pandemic mm -hmm. as well as the, the issues around race. So, and our coaches have, have basically answered the bell. You know, they're, they're having these tough conversations. They're, they're leading by example. They're making sure they communicate with our student athletes and staff and, and community. Uh, and it's just great to see. It's emotional, uh, it's draining, but it's great to see the leadership uh, being demonstrated on a regular basis. If you had to sum everything up, five words, I think. The Huskies are in good hands when uh, it comes to this. I would say that, absolutely. No question about it. Let's continue to look at the uh, the Victory Bash, the virtual Victory Bash, if you would. Uh, calendar of events. I, I keep saying, you know, mark your calendar for this. Don't miss this. And, you know, the list goes on. And, but I'm really looking uh, as, a, as a broadcaster and a gentleman who happened to be there uh, to uh, next Thursday, the 18th of the month of June. Uh, we speak of watershed moments. Well, athletically and in terms of football, that was a watershed moment. Mm -hmm. 15th rated team of the country. It was the Terrapins of Maryland came into DeKalb. I remember sitting in the in, in our broadcast booth an hour before we went on the air and looking out over Annie Glidden Road, Lincoln Highway, bumper to bumper traffic, two lanes deep, no place to go, trying to get in. Somebody came up in my ear said they're scalping tickets on Lincoln Highway. Mm. Huskies and Maryland. You remember where you were? Did you happen to watch that game? I didn't watch change? it, but I feel I felt like uh, not live, in other words. But I, I've watched it uh, five and six times mm -hmm. previously. And one of the impetus behind uh, getting Maryland to come back and put that home and home schedule on mm -hmm. was That's the right. passion when I talked to Husky Nation, saying that that was a watershed moment for a lot of us who watched that game and who lived that game. And I actually had a chance to talk to a couple of coaches 
uh, on both sides of the ball that remember that day and that night. And uh, that gave me goosebumps as well. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and so that all was the driving force to make sure that we put a, a competitive schedule together and to bring that level of competition into Husky Nation. So, yeah, that, that game was real. That's to no bring question. them in and to win at Husky Stadium. Deflected pass, you know, in the, right at the goal line of the end zone. I forget which, for the interception at the end of the game, which, which ended it. August the 28th, 2003 is, uh, is when that took place. And it, but you'll see it. You'll see the broadcast. You'll see it pretty much in its entirety, one of the biggest upsets in school history. Not only the uh, complete game video to premiere, we have added content that uh, You'll not see, you'll not hear it anywhere else. And there's the guy right there. That's head coach, former head coach, Hall of Fame head coach, Joe Novak. He is going to take us behind the scenes through that game with his commentary. That's going to be special. That makes it special. Yeah, and Joe uh, brings it to life, right? So you talk to Joe. He's one of the individuals that I had spoken to about that, uh, that, that day, that game. And to, to listen to him and to listen to the preparedness and the odds makers and all these different folks that were doubting, you know, why is this happening and all these other types of situations, you can feel that passion. You know, it, it, it really, you know, resonated, right? So folks that when they talk about that and they re-televise that, to have him take us through that behind the scene, kind of like a 30 for 30 for ESPN type scenario, mm -hmm. where mm -hmm. he's going to break it down for us and so we can relive it again. And uh, I, that's going to be excited for, uh, for, uh, for Husky Nation to be able to see that and to get a little bit uh, juiced up for things to go because we do have Maryland on the schedule. Yes, we do. This year. Yes, we so, do. Yeah. Yes, we do indeed. Uh, that'll, be, that'll be at College Park, but aren't they scheduled to come back they're here? They're scheduled a bit to later come back on? here as well. So, indeed, no so, question. So that was because of, because of this game. So we're no, excited. No question about it. I know we're calling it a watch party. Uh, what you need to do is grab a beverage, put on some of your you know Husky uh, paraphernalia, be it red, black, white, whichever, uh, as long as it says NIU on it, and uh, watch the game that helps set the stage for the decade of dominance in terms of Husky football. Thursday night, the 18th of June, it begins at 7 p.m. Central Time. Let's hear from yet uh, another Husky student athlete. She has a story to tell uh, as to how the, the Husky Nation came together to lift her up in, in a very scary time in, in her life. Let's roll the tape as we hear from Polita Castro and NIU women's basketball. Hello. My name is Paulina Castro and I am a student athlete on the women's basketball team. It is truly an honor and a privilege to have the opportunity to share my experience with you as a student athlete at NIU. It's hard to believe it's been four years since I began my NIU educational and athletic experience. Sadly, this upcoming season will be my final year of eligibility, but I'm excited to report that I will graduate in the fall with a bachelor's degree in kinesiology. I plan to pursue a master's degree in sports management in the near future. To give you a little background about myself, I was born and raised in Elgin, Illinois. I come from a family of five, which include my two hardworking parents, Pablo and Elisa Castro. My dad introduced me to the game of basketball at the age of five. He taught me what it means to fight harder than the person next to me. My mother has always been my biggest supporter, and she has taught me what it means to trust that God's plan will always reign. My eldest sister, Felicia, has taught me what resiliency is. And my middle sister, Jasmine, has taught me the importance of stepping out of my comfort zone. I cannot talk about my family and not mention my grandparents. They have shown me unconditional love regardless of my time on the court. They are a light in my life. I mention all these people because family is so important to me. I would describe my family as a pillar, something that reliably provides essential support. With that being said, it is easy to describe and classify the NIU community as my family. You may ask why. Well, it's because my coaches, teammates, administrators, professors, and many NIU alumni and donors have been by my side throughout the trials and tribulations of my career. My NIU path has been a rocky road and what some may describe as being filled with challenges and obstacles. In December of 2016, a week away from finishing my first semester at NIU, I was diagnosed with stage four Hodgkin's lymphoma. I began chemotherapy on December 23rd and had my last treatment on May 26th. After that, I was unclear of my future as an NIU athlete, but I was determined to find my way back to the court. I truly believe this would have not been possible without the outreach and support I received from the entire NIU and neighboring communities. It is hard to put into words my gratitude. 
phone calls, letters, prayers, drawings from elementary students, and continuous check-ins is what made this time so memorable, inspiring, and motivational. I was overwhelmed with the love I received, and I am certain that my NIU family made this challenging time possible. They provided encouragement and strength to help me overcome my obstacles. Even though I have faced adversity on the court many times, it has never driven me away. I have learned and grown tremendously since the first time I stepped on campus in June of 2016. I have become a leader on my team and in the student athlete community. I have grown in my faith and I feel prepared to exemplify who and what NIU is. Huskies care, work hard, and never give up. Our student athlete culture is possible because of what you as donors have given back to NIU. You have established and built the foundation for us to grow and excel on the court, in the classroom, and as people. Thank you for everything that you do for us. During my time at NIU, I have been a part of Athletes in Action, the Student Athlete Advisory Committee, Captain's Council, the Women's Basketball Leadership Group, and I will be a captain on the women's basketball team for this upcoming season. Without your support, none of this would have been possible. The lessons I have learned from these groups and the individuals that I have been able to work with have helped shape me into the person I am today. These relationships have greatly impacted who I am and have driven me to pursue my dream of becoming professionally involved in college athletics. I aspire to be a coach and influence others the same way NIU coaches, professors, administrators, and donors have inspired me. The student athlete experience I have had over the past four years is something I would have never imagined being able to be a part of. Despite its challenges, it is everything I could have ever asked for and more. Without a doubt, my time here would have not been the same if it weren't for the incredible community and support from our donors. Your support does not go unnoticed, and we truly thank you for what you do. You make us proud to be Huskies. I love being a Husky. I bleed red and black, and I will forever cherish my time here. Thank you, NIU, for being my home away from home and for your continued support. Go Huskies. Sean, you know, it's amazing. I watch these young people. Uh, I wonder to myself, how could you not want to support these quality, uh, quality student athletes? We, when you look at uh, Polita, you look at Cole, you look at Remy, so many more. We have 400 of them on campus uh, here in DeKalb. And, and this is what these next 10 days are all about. Yeah, it's no question about it. You know, obviously I get, I get a little choked up about Paulina battling cancer, you know, doing the things that she has done on and off the court. Um, she is, she epitomizes what we are, right? Uh, what we are as Huskies, what we are as NIU student athletes. Uh, her story uh, and her journey um, is inspirational. Uh, and, and when you hear it in her voice, uh, and she's so uh, humble uh, in the way that she talks about her experience, and, but at the same time, very passionate. So, so that is the Husky spirit, right? Someone who faces adversity, conquers it, and it moves on and makes good. So uh, yeah, I'm excited about all of our student athletes, all of our, all of our young people do a great job here, but you know what, it, it's, it's about the place too. It's a magical union and uh, yeah, they've done a great job, and I would Indeed. agree with you. We've got some special students. You know, the courage she had to battle through this, and that came, you know, from what I understand, through her teammates and through her coaching staff and, and so many other people on campus uh, that, that are involved with, with Husky athletics on a day-to-day -day basis. Well, you know, as well as I do, a great way to get involved is by participating in the, the silent auction that we have going. And again, we've talked about this. It's on 24 hours a day, seven days a week. It's going to take us all the way into the 19th of uh, the month of June when we will close the virtual Victor E. Bash. Uh, I checked out some of the items. I've been bidding against this guy all night long for a couple of these items. You're not going to uh, win. You're not going to win, though. No, nah, yeah, you wait. <laughs> <laughs> Got to, you know, my wife has got the uh, she's got the credit card out yep. too, so you, you've got to watch out. Know. Know, you know, if you've you. always wanted a husky football helmet, for example, it looked great in the den, yeah. great in the man cave, yeah, just yeah. about anywhere. Yeah. I mean, you can have one. It's one of the items that we have up for bid. Uh, we've got NIU gear from just about every one of our our different sports trips with teams, mm -hmm. sideline passes uh, for football, autographed items from uh, some of our huskies uh, in the pros, and, and so much more. You can check everything out. You can bid today. You can bid right now at the victorebash.givesmart.com. The auction ends Friday, 
June 19th. It's going to end promptly at 9 p.m. that night. And that same night at 7 p.m., you want to come right back here to uh, the NIU Athletics YouTube channel. We'll wrap things up with a very special video featuring the, uh, the pretty much the entire NIU athletic staff, student athletes, and coaches as uh, we say goodbye at that time for um, for 2020. We've had a great night. I've enjoyed you know being actually able to sit and talk with you and, and kind of right. go back and forth. But we're not quite done yet, my friend. And it's time for me to um, kind of toss the gamut into your lap this way. Uh, you know this event is is near and dear to your heart. You brought this into the Cal back in 2015 as uh, the Victory Bowl. Yes. And we went through, uh, you know, the Victory Bowl in several different locations. It has turned into our premier fundraising event. It has certainly been uh, highly successful. This year came the Victory Bash, attempt to, uh, you know, to expand it, bring it back on campus, more people, more interaction with different things, an outstanding idea. Unfortunately, because of things, it turned into the virtual mm -hmm. Victory Bash. And because of that, the support we need, the support we need from our donors and our supporters is more vital than it ever has been before. So why don't you take us home, uh, my friend, the, uh, the floor is yours. Well, I appreciate it, Bill. Uh, thanks a lot for your continued support. You've been magical for us. You've been a leader. Your time spent with us means everything. And I want to publicly say thank you so much for being the voice of the Huskies. It is always a pleasure, my friend. You do a great friend. job. You yes, do a thank great you. Job. It is always a pleasure. Great. So now bring it home. I, here we go. Here we go. So again, you know, Husky Nation, this is real. Um, you know, our, our coaches, our student athletes, uh, our staff, our faculty, our community, um, these are trying and tough times. There's no question about it. You know, they're challenging times. We talked about the COVID-19. We talked about the social issues and the racial issues that are currently happening. Um, and they have affected us. Uh, it's real. Um, and I think for the, 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 the larger process is that, you know, there's no question that some of this will pass. This too shall pass relative to the COVID-19 once we find a, va a vaccine, once we get in front of it, once we maintain uh, health, uh, health and safety. Uh, the race relations, again, that's an ongoing process. That's something that uh, as America will we'll have to continue to monitor. Uh, the, great, the great news is that NIU's leadership, President Lisa Freeman, uh, our cabinet, our, our administrators, our supporters, they're well positioned. They have demonstrated leadership in these particular areas. So we're in good hands. There's no question about that. I feel really comfortable about that. But at the end of the day, the effects of COVID-19 has taken effect. Uh, and uh, what I mean by that is that we are bracing for, for budget cuts. There's no question. Uh, we have to do that. This is not about the athletic department. This is about NIU. We do not have the athletic department without, uh, uh, without NIU. We need to make sure that we maintain support and be a part of the greater good of the, of the university. And that means that we're going to have to tighten our belt. We're gonna have some budgetary reductions and we're no stranger to that. We are built for this time. Bottom line, we are built for this time. We've gone through uh, budgetary reductions in, in, in our great state of Illinois, back from 15 to 17. We've endured a number of these things, and we've continued to perform academically and athletically. So that doesn't scare us. We, we're not going to flinch when it comes to that. We understand that because we've got great donors, great supporters, and quite frankly, we've got the Husky spirit to move the agenda. So there's no question about that. We've had great success stories. You know, this year alone, We've broken the record again academically. Mm -hmm. It's fantastic to have the best overall GPA of a 3.68. Uh, uh, a great semester, spring semester GPA of 3.68 in our history. And we've broken the 3.3 barrier. We we're trying to get to the 3.3 overall uh, cumulative GPA, and, we, and we've done that. Uh, and so we've done it academically. Athletically, again, we, 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 we did the best we can and, and move forward with our, our MAC, men, uh, our, our MAC uh, basketball championship. We have a share of the MAC West. We were uh, uh, about to, uh, uh, to win it all, in my viewpoint, uh, where we had to close down the tournament uh, in Cleveland. And that was a, a shocker. But we have some of the best uh, competitions we've seen in the last past 10, 15 years. So we're excited about that. We also you know, had great finishes in cross country, uh, in, uh, indoor track. And obviously, gymnastics coming off of a 
a, a, a championship as well. So we've, we continue to excel athletically and academically. And these are success stories uh, against the adversity that we've had. Uh, and we will continue to do that. But I need to let you understand, the need is real. These types of events, these types of uh, interactions and engagement or for exactly that, an engagement, an opportunity to hear the stories of our student athletes, to hear the stories of what's going on in our athletic department. Uh, they give you a chance to have some inside look about the different things and how the support has impacted our student athletes' lives. You know, there's nothing more uh, contagious to be able to look at and hear the stories and how it, the education and the scholarship dollars have impacted people's lives and you've heard some of that tonight you'll hear that during the course of this 10 days you'll see some of the great history and tradition that Husky Nation and Husky Athletics is all about uh, I just need you to take a look at that understand that be engaged ask questions and make sure be proud be proud of who you are um, at the end of the day, the reason why I'm able to do or we are able to do what we do is because of your generous support. There's no question that our need is great. We understand that. We are not tone deaf about what's happened in America right now with COVID-19 and the race relations and everything else that's financial uh, that's going on. But we also understand that this is our greatest need. And this is a time that if you can show any love whatsoever, any love, and I would say, just look me in my good eye. And those <laughs> that know, in the good eye, just to let y'all know, is this one, is that we need you. We need you at this point in time to continue to support us and to do whatever you can to move our agenda. So having said that, I look forward to these 10 days, these, 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 uh, th these moments that we can have some interactions with you. Um, I will celebrate with you. I can't wait to see you. Lord knows, um, as I'm locked up in in my house, and I know Mrs. Frazier is watching right now, um, I'm so happy to be away for a little bit so I can kind of enjoy the experience with you. But hey, have fun this week. Let's get after it. Let's go Huskies. Let's take care of it. Bill, back to you, my friend. Sean, thank you, my friend. Be careful with that. <laughs> I had be to careful. get it out. <laughs> be careful with that. Thank you for being here tonight. It, it's been terrific, as I said before, to, to have you actually so close and, and be able to have a conversation and be able to share it online with so many, so many different people. The virtual Victor E. Bash. We'll do this. We'll get together again, you and I, sometime and, and, uh, and go over a lot of things. And, and I, I hope that everybody's excited over the, the span of these next 10 days. Let me echo the words of uh, Sean T. Frazier. Let's have some fun. Let's get some people together. Let's enjoy Husky athletics. Let's support Northern Illinois athletics. And one last look while we have a chance. This is what our schedule is going to look like for the, uh, the span of these next 10 days. The different events we have here as part of the, the virtual Victor E. Bash. Keep an eye on that. The, uh, the video events premiere at 7 p.m. Central Time on the particular night listed. More details. In case it, it kind of drops off the back of your mind, in case you, you lose the notes you've made, uh, they're always available at NIUHuskies.com. Everything you need to know about NIU Athletics available at NIUHuskies.com. It's time to close out tonight. What better way, I think, to do so than to taking a look at the 2019-2020 Athletic All Sports video. Our thanks to our crew who came from far and wide to, uh, to help us. Our thanks to Donna Turner, who put everything uh, together for us. And of course, Sean and the people back in the, uh, the control room. So glad to be uh, back on campus. So glad to be back with everybody once again. So let's take a look at the video. Huskies, stay safe. Good night from DeKalb. Good night from the Convocation Center. I want to let them know who we are today. Than any virus, it's fear. And when it comes to fear, you can either forget everything and run, or you can face everything and rise. I believe. And let me tell you what I believe. I believe that. I believe we will face everything.
the new all-time three-point shooter in NIU history. It's Courtney Woods. Take to the rim. Lip off the glass is good. And Courtney Woods has now scored 2,000 points in an NIU uniform. The dribble, Gino to the hoop. Got him up on the glass. And he is the all-time leading scorer in Northern Illinois men's basketball history. From three, got it. 2,000 points to Gene Jerman. 2,000 points for you, Gene Jerman, on the Twilighter. Nobody has ever done that. Bottom line, no matter what, face everything and rise.